This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I am Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. As the sun goes down on another wonderful, awesome Tuesday evening here in the city, in the neighborhood uh, with us. We got, the, we got the full staff here today. Holy crap, this is amazing. First of all, we'll go to Studio C out in the Big D Dormont. Is John Chichilla, the gadget guru at Big Bank International Esquire? Hey, hey, how's it going? It's been a while since I've bumped in from Studio C. That's you right. See the, the sun is still shining. Uh huh. So and much has blown out in the shot. <laughs> we, we just see it. Just all. Just it looks like. Um, don't. I live on the sun. Just don't walk into that light, okay? Yes, no problem. It's also because it's a window two stories up. <laughs> so, also with us on the couch, the Dutters is back from the Big B. From the Big B? The big, yes, <laughs> live from the Big B. We're in the Big B. The big... <laughs> He's in the Big D. I want to be in the Big B. She's taking a night off from uh, Pew Pews, and Pew we'll Pew. be talking about that in Rogue Laser Grounds here uh, a little bit later in the show, right? Yeah. So is it nice to be working on a project that's not like all zombies all the time? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, it's fun. It's a different It's a different mental exercise. <laughs> your, your, uh, your search history is a little less weird than typical? Yes, yes, yes. Definitely less weird. Still weird. It's less weird. <laughs> also back with us, also a man of the Big Bank International Esquire of, of the device category and such is <laughs> Ron Krause joining us once again. Hello. <laughs> and and to give us a contrarian opinion about Apple things and applause habits. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you for joining us, Ron. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. Thank you. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, producer Missy's on the ones and twos in the back, making sure we stay on task. She has a microphone this week. Is this where you want me to turn the microphone on? Hi. Does she have two she's, turntables? She's no, no. To, I oh. guess I got the turntables technically. I have so. turntables over here. He just isn't aware of it. That's right. <laughs> uh, anyways, this is the Awesome Cast. You can check out everything at awesomecast.com, uh, where you can uh, uh, you know find a where you can subscribe to us. And the new episodes on there. Uh, and of course, uh, email us at awesomecast at circuitronmedia.com. If you are interested in being part of the studio audience or if you're interested in any advertising opportunities, they can reach out to the audience here on the show and also tweet us at May, or I'm sorry, at awesomecast. What show is this? Uh, follow <laughs> our Facebook for awesomecast where we go live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time uh, on Facebook Live. And also, you can please subscribe to us on your podcast app and watch video versions on Facebook and YouTube. And I swear this worked, but then I demonstrated it for uh, for Krauss and Dutters, and it didn't work. But uh, we are available <laughs> on Google Home and uh, Amazon Echo. I was testing this out a little bit. Um, but uh, if you if you go to Google Home and tell it to play uh, the Oscar, Awesome Cast uh, podcast on uh uh, Google Music podcast. I'm, I'm I'm working on the wording to officially have that. Or if you tell uh, the Amazon Echo A Train, if you will, to uh, play the Awesome Cast on TuneIn, it will also pop up there. And we are looking into flash briefings as well, so you can add that to that to your morning routine. Say if there's a new episode. Do you, so do you have to add TuneIn ahead of time, or you can just say? Play awesome cast on tune um, it'll probably it automatically like installs the what do they call it the it may it may ask you to turn it on or or, or something when you first do it um but you do they call those it, uh, the skills the skills yeah on there um it, i don't know they only have like four things and i'm not on spotify hey we're on spotify did you know that <laughs> I, double I, used, I have i have all my echoes set to use uh apple music well there's that, that works too. great 
There's that too. And I, and I guess if you if you have Spotify turned on as a skill and you subscribe to that on your uh, device, you can ask it to play Awesome Cast on that as well and, and all the other great Sorgatron media uh, stuff out there. The Master Feed's on there, so if you wanted to get a sampling of everything, you could do that as well. Uh, also, uh, thanks to our streaming partners, River, RiversEdgePGH.com. Uh, that carries us Saturday mornings at 9 a.m., as well as our friends at the405media.com that's carrying us weekdays at 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon Eastern. And also we have a new streaming friend over on Spreaker.com. Our friend Hutch Bailey, uh, old friend of the Awesome Cast, is carrying uh, our shows over there on WHBJDB. Uh, so go check that out. Go look them up, WHBJDB, over on Spreaker.com. They're carrying us on the 24-hour uh, feed there so we'll pop up there from time to time as you listen to their programming as well also thank you to our patreon supporters patreon.com slash awesome cast our friends at the coffee club five dollar level that will hear about uh <laughs> ron's uh less than awesome thoughts about applauding at apple events uh over there our friend matt weller and john dickie de gore and of course the, at the fan of the show dollar level our friend mike fedor uh please uh, support the show if you're digging what's going on here even throwing a bucket helps keep the lights on here in the studio over at patreon.com slash awesome cast so let's get into our awesome things of the week uh, we already talked about it a little bit. I, I, we should talk about the pew-pews a little bit. Pew-pew. So you guys had your first weekend of Rogue Laser Grounds and some yeah. test runs and everything. And, and the pew-pews. And a few of us got to go out there. We brought some wrestlers with us as yes, well. Yes, that was so <laughs> much fun. <laughs> that was it. If, if you want somebody competitive, bring some pro wrestlers with you. Yes. And it gets really interesting. Really oh, so much. We played for like, what, over two hours? We, we, uh, we played two hours straight. Played, wow. Yeah, and everybody they wanted, they weren't done. They could have stayed and played longer. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So that tells you anything about I it. I mean, it's good you have hour blocks just so like you can kick people out if they're staying too long. Yeah. <laughs> how long? How long does the battery in a gun last? Um, I don't know. We haven't killed one yet, so. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Hey, exactly. Come out all day, chilla, and play. Well, you know, if you ever need the test, like the how long can these, and you know the group mm-hmm. that will probably go for it. <laughs> so, but that'll be good to know. Yeah, I need to get chilla out there because he needs to see these guns. He's gonna he's gonna be real impressed. I think. <laughs> So it was it was really fun because it, it really did like it felt like a video game yeah. like the interface like there was a screen you guys have some game modes and everything mm-hmm. and and it did feel like I'm setting up like when I'm watching the screen and, and you guys setting up for the games it felt like like I'm setting up for a Halo match yes like a lot yeah and and I think that's one of the things that I, when you get in there you're like oh this isn't like what I'm used to with laser tag this is this is mm-hmm. much crazier this is much and I think a lot of people are expecting it to be scary because it's scare house but it's not scary at all it's you know it's like our scenic team built this really cool thing so it's like scare house quality but how many people can go in in a group uh, up to 16 players at a time 16 players at a time and is there an age 10. 10. And then the only reason it's 10 and up is because we tried it with younger kiddos and they had a hard time just carrying or handling the gun. Oh, uh, yeah. So we they got really frustrated. Yeah. It's rifles. a good size gun, too. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. and, um, and, 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 you know, you got to hold it with two hands. You got to, you know, it, it's because there's a lot to it. There's a lot of buttons on the mm-hmm. gun. And there is a little bit of, and, and you can perfectly play fine and not play with all the kind of gadgets on the gun and everything, too. Mm-hmm. Like I was, I, I found the bandages to give my health back. Yeah, you know, for instance, it was like, oh, make sure you do this. Um, bandages. Yeah, because yeah. you actually have a health meter on oh, there. Oh, very cool. And then there'll yeah. be bandages, and then as you play, you get other guns. So mm-hmm. is the gun the target? The gun is both. You have a headband, and you also have the gun. Okay. Mm-hmm. So both of them have sensors on them. Okay. So you know you can't have that. You know that person hiding with their just like right. keep yeah, shooting because yeah. you can shoot the gun and okay. it affects their health. Mm-hmm. Very cool. So uh, there, there's, there's three modes. We play a uh, team death match, a kind of capture the flag mode. Yes. How does that one work? Which one? The capture the flag? Oh, yeah. did you hear John Park up? Yes, he's so yeah, excited. Yeah. There, there's essentially these boxes, and then we have a couple. We have a few of these boxes, but two will be set up. You'll have a red team and a blue team, and you have them in kind of in two separate zones. There's two levels. It's multi-level up ramps, so you have them separated from each other. And what happens is, is you got to run up and go to this box and essentially hold the button for five seconds. The flag is transferred to your um, headband, and then you have to make it back to your home base and press that button for five seconds. And nice. yeah, it's so much oh, fun. Very it's cool. really funny because it's a proximity sensor on the the box. So you might be the one pr- 
pressing the button arms length away, arms length away. But if someone is standing closer to it, they'll get the gut or the flag on their headband, which happened to us. And it was hilarious because we realized we, cause there's a, like Sorg said, there's a, there's a screen and it tells you who has the flag. And we realized that somebody's still up there on the front lines shooting at the other team had the flag and we were yelling, get back, get back. <laughs> Somebody had the flag for like two minutes and didn't know it yeah, or, we or no something. Idea. And oh, it, very it was cool. like, I don't know. And then he like happened to get killed and probably returned the flag. Right. Meanwhile, yeah. we're all going and pressing the box and we're like, <laughs> why am I not getting it? Who has it? What's going on here? Um, and I remember like somebody pressed a button and Dutters is like, like 10 feet away. And I saw her headband go off. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so, but again, this is why we're beta testing, right? Mm-hmm. So before it gets out to the public and, and we know how the game works, <laughs> so, but no, it was fine. And it is very, um, there's a lot of Tron in the soundtrack playing in the mm-hmm. background and everything. Uh, if there's anything Scarehouse is good at, it's it's definitely sound design mm-hmm. uh, with things. I know um, some of the guys that I really was talking with Scott about, like some of the, the tracks are on there. Yeah. We're, we're talking about Tron. We're talking about like there's some into the Spider Verses yep. in there. Uh, so uh, it's it's a really really cool thing. Like and and I I love that like you don't have a bunch of equipment on you. It doesn't mm-hmm. feel cumbersome like most laser tags do, right? But this is definitely higher end equipment. Very so, fancy pants. Yes, and I, and I guess uh, uh, Chris Winmatch joined us, and and he was talking about he he used the same equipment, um, in a setup where somebody did outdoors, where they had the speakers and everything, and and had a really cool setup there. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's awesome. So oh, um, I that, see you have the TAE article. You should have done the Trib one. You could at least see my quotes. What? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, was that in, a... I was in the Trib article. Everybody was teasing me. <laughs> Dudas says, "I was like, who's Dudas? I'm like, I'm Dutters." <laughs> It took that, to the, yeah, they took that the wrong way. Hey, we both got in the paper in this last one. Oh, look at I us. got the other paper. Oh, they, they're, they're not, they're not looking for you still. I way. know. I, yeah, <laughs> I can't wait. I hope one day, one day. I almost brought that up in the interview too. Like, hey, you know. I, no, no, I, I got in the post gazette, not my awesome thing, but I got in the post gazette talking about the ride sharing today. Um, they were talking about the background checks. So I, I told her about my, my experiences when I onboarded to both Uber and Lyft uh, two years ago. Yeah. And they're vastly different. We've talked about it here on the mm-hmm. show, of course, that process. Uh, but go go look for the, the latest uh, the Lyft and ride sharing article over on the postgazette.com uh, to see my quotes at the beginning of the article there. So cool. Anyways, um, cool. Uh, so uh, Rogue Blazers Crown uh, uh, currently uh, running through the end of April, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, for now. For now. I mean, if it takes off, we could probably try we'll to see what happens. Till, till they start season two, like Fortnite. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Everybody gets badges and decorations and dance moves. Yes. <laughs> don't do the Carlton so we don't get sued. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Uh, Chilla, what is your awesome thing? So my basement is at, I would say, 96% completion. Mm-hmm. We have walls painted, floors in place. We're doing stuff like touch-up paint and uh, some some just final little here's and there's. But it is a vast, vast empty room. Um, it's missing things like furniture and stereo equipment and most namely a TV. So this weekend, I need to go find myself a TV. So I'm thinking... There's the the Vizio that I put in the show notes. Vizio is already starting to update their TVs to bring in AirPlay 2 and HomeKit. Um, I am looking for something in the 75-inch range. So (laughs) so I do need to go. It's a game um, room. Yeah. Yeah. So I do need to go a little bigger. So I need something that's going to gonna um, look good at a large size so i'm going 4k obviously i do i think i do want something that's that's at least getting the apple updates i know lg is doing some work with their 2019 televisions to update those vizio is going back to last year um i'm looking right now at the samsung not the qled but um the 4k hdr um, stuff they have one on sale for i th- think a little over a thousand bucks right now at costco so i'm interested if anyone has any opinions ron i know you've recently purchased a tv um the, i'm interested in to hear what people have gotten and what people have seen 
um, what they like, what they don't like. I'm not saying that I'll take your opinion directly and go <laughs> run out and buy it tonight, but I am interested in if anyone listening or live in the chat room um, has an opinion on brand and why. It was interesting because the Samsung that I was looking at over the weekend has Bixby integrated. Hmm. Um, and and the TV that I was looking at should get the um, Apple updates, not to mention. Um, oh, I'm, uh, That's me. That's I'm me. Um, That's me. No, that was me. That was me. Hold on a second. So I, I already have <laughs> the. Wait, I love. Wait, wait, wait. If you're on audio, he just reached behind a door <laughs> and pulled out a package in, in relatively arm's reach. It's like he's. Oh. Somewhere like, in it, if I can get the box open. So, the so bo- I have the Apple 4K oh. Apple TV okay. on the ready. Okay. It, nice. It's just short a TV. Still- <laughs> <laughs> he has the 4K. Still in Apple the box. TV. Still in the plastic to to the to the to the box and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have an extra TiVo up on the rack. Um, so so I'm I'm ready for the TV. I just need to figure out what. TV I'm actually getting. Uh Michael Greathouse in the in the chat room. A new name, I believe it. In there. Oh, hey Mike, how's it going? Uh he is uh he says Vizio has a nice one on sale. Right now. I will have to go check that I'll out. Check that out. So yeah, help you but please, I I have to come over and see your seventy two inch television because seventy five, seventy five I'm sorry, seventy five inches. <laughs> I'm sorry. Those th- the three is, hey. is what does it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's that's your extra K. That's the magic number. Oh jeez. Um, but, uh, you know, I guess you don't need virtual reality when, if you can get close enough to the TV that you can't see anything else around you, but, uh, I can't wait to see. I'm always Samsung, Samsung, Samsung. When it comes to see, and that's why I'm, I'm thinking I want to stick with the, um, Samsung line because everything else in the house is Samsung. I do have a Vizio in Christopher's room. that's like a 43 inch that I really like. Um, but um, everything else is Samsung, and I, the the picture quality is better. I yes. roll with it. I do this 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 Samsung plasma is amazing. Yeah, that I picked up for eighty bucks <laughs> off Letgo. <laughs> so I mean, and, and like I'm starting to know. I mean, again, the plasma is something different, but I'm starting to notice like a little bit of the difference in quality between this and I'm spending a little bit more time at home on my Vizio uh, lately, and be like, oh man, this that, that is a little different, you know? Yeah. So I mean, this is stuff that we're going to be nitpicky as as video files. Uh, for this but and i don't care where you go you walk up to the row of televisions Mm -hmm. you could cover all the brand names and as far as i'm concerned don't get me wrong most picture quality today is very good yes but samsung is always Mm -hmm. just a little better that's that little bit you pay for and i you know so I, i just can't argue with it so definitely hit us up um, actually on the Twitter, uh, AwesomeCast Twitter, or in the AwesomeCast group, if you have any TV recommendations for John, and let's get that conversation going. Uh, speaking of AirPlay, you did remind me I altered my, my awesome thing because I remembered something that I tried this week. Remember, hey, hey, chiller, remember this long conversation I've been having, this frustration I have about there's nothing on the Apple TV to play, you mm-hmm. know, in comparison to like, you know, like Sega released all these old Genesis games, and it's like, I love Sega's it. released, or, or, was it an April Fool's joke, or are they actually releasing like a a unit with like 50 games. Oh, they are. They are. They are. Okay. That, that, that's for real. The Nintendo Direct, that was fake. And it had me really excited <laughs> for a moment. Then I saw I was releasing like the Zelda CDI games and I'm like, okay, this got weird. Uh, but then I said like TurboTax was coming to the Switch. I was like, okay, okay. Because um, <laughs> their joke was everything's coming and they just kept going. And I was like, oh, this is like an IGN April Fool's. But anyways, um, so I, I, I started playing a little bit with, with AirPlay in my Apple TV, Chilla. And I pulled up those Sega Genesis games through the Sega Forever collection. And I'm like, wait a minute. So I grabbed my Nimbus Steel uh, controller, mm-hmm. connected to my phone, airplayed the phone to my Apple TV. And for the most part, without issue, I was playing my Genesis games on the Apple TV. No, no lag issues? <laughs> Not enough that it noticed. There's a little bit of stumbling here and there, and I actually had a problem where I was playing Grand Theft Auto 3, and it just started... It's The game started lagging mm. itself. Like, I looked at my phone, it, it was lagging, and it was just coming across that way. Something was going on there, but I might have, like, a background process or something. Um, I played a full game of Carmageddon on my TV mm. with my controller via my phone 
You know, it's that little awkwardness where you have to put the phone over here, and sometimes there are things that the controller won't control in the menu, and you have to go touch it and everything. Right. Like, there's that little bit of oddness there, but for that, and, and Grand Theft Auto mostly, until it started glitching on me, I played a good 10 minutes before it started glitching. Um, you know, games like that. If it has controller support on the phone, and you can pop the a- Apple TV, and you got a pretty reliable Apple TV AirPlay Did connection. Did you try Fortnite? I did. It has it has controller support on the phone. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, that's why I asked. And uh, I did not get very far with it because I think I, I needed to cra- drop another gig uh, update. And I was at home mm. on, on cell. Uh, the Wi-Fi is here at the office. Um, so um, that's something I'm going to do, Chilla. I'm going to try to do that before I leave to California this week. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but um, but also I'm going to bring my controller with me because I realize I can just have my controller and have my iPad Pro. And just, oh, right. like, it's a really good game machine now. Yeah. Right? And I can just pull all those games up. You can, um, um, then it, did you ever play the old Nintendo Knights of the Old Republic? Uh, or, I'm sorry, not Nintendo, Star Xbox. Wars Knights of the Old Republic yeah, on uh, Xbox. Yeah. yeah, it was on Xbox. Those games also have controller support. I figure anything like that, and like, and even, you know, I've grabbed like the old like Tomb Raiders and Jack Ryan Radio. Some of them didn't get updated for the new 64 bit. But like it's like it was kind of like oh there's this all this stuff that I didn't realize I could do with my phone and gaming, and I think and again that's kind of a, an Apple problem is they like hey we can do all this stuff and then they don't tell you, or they but don't I, support it or or something. Yeah, I wonder if Xbox will see the same thing with mouse and keyboard support, like because that's up to the developer to turn on. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So um, just a little tip. If you have an Apple TV or your crazy 4K one chilla when you break it out, mm-hmm. uh, AirPlay and uh, and a nice like like controller for your Apple devices, like you've, you've got a pretty cool system there yeah. uh, mm-hmm. with a lot of those games. So um, so throw that out there. Uh, Kraus, just check- you're next. Yeah. Just checking in. WW is still working. I've lost uh, about 16 pounds. We're so. talking about Weight Watchers. Yeah. For if you didn't catch well, before. no, it's just WW. Wait, 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 wait. No, are you serious? Yeah, they rebranded. It's oh, come just on. WW. Wait, like WWE? Like, what yeah. are we doing here? Yeah, but um, but it's working. Um, I'm still using the app, and I'm pretty happy with the results. And, um, you know, yes, it's costing me, you know, uh, 19.99 or whatever. But when you're talking about your health, yeah, I mean. Yeah. Well, what's the conversation here? You know? Exactly. So. But I just figured I'd check in because I didn't have anything else to talk about tonight. Mm-hmm. So, but that that's, yeah. It's, so it's definitely working. And if anybody's looking to lose some weight, I would recommend it. Awesome. So. That's great. Uh, I want to put, because uh, Michael's in there saying about uh, the Chromecast. Um, I think with Android phones, you can do something similar. Like, yeah. I know there's some, there, there were games that you can get on your phone. Mm-hmm. Uh, even on iPhone that you could Chromecast and like it would throw the game up and everything. Yeah. And there are some of those, like there was some, I found an article from a couple of years ago of AirPlay where you're playing a racing game and the stuff is on your iPad, like the, the, the readout, but the game is on your air on your, Oh, very cool. On the, on the Apple TV. So th- there's different variations, but again, I don't, I don't see much of that advertising mm-hmm. utilized. So, all right. Speaking of cool new things, maybe you haven't heard about yet. I want to give a shout out to our friends that, bardicmysterytour.com this is a new podcast that has just uh, come on and joined us they've been going for a little bit now uh but they just came on with us over here at the sorgatron media podcast network uh it is a uh, they're a bunch of geeks and nerds and uh we're a bunch of geeks and nerds here talking tech uh week to week and what, what could be nerdier and geeker than tech how about dungeons and dragons you guys better yet how about a dnd podcast our friends at bardic mystery uh, regale the crowd with tales of a rock band of bards on tour. They kick in doors and solve mysteries. Uh, as an added bonus, they write original songs that are part of the podcast. And I believe they are working on releasing an album of that original uh, content uh, out on, uh, I think, Bandcamp or something as well. Um, I, I had a chance to, again, uh, talk with the guys uh, from this show. Uh, they're really cool. Um, uh, some of them work with uh, look, Looking for Group, actually. And uh, and uh, I, I listened to uh, through one of the stories on the way from Bay, on the way back from Dayton last month, and it's really good, especially on car trips. Um, you know, there's a good history there, and uh, you know, it's not something like this where you need to catch week to week. You can just jump in and uh, check out the story. 
Uh, so go check it out. A great D and D podcast with original music, Arctic mystery tour.com to get all the links and information on that. And thanks for being a part of Sorgatron media. All right, let's get into, again, you guys can gro- join our, um, Facebook group for awesome cast. And a lot of you guys, uh, share stories throughout the week. I know Ron, you were kind of grumbling at, uh, <laughs> I think we we determined it was old man grumbling at the idea that Comcast is to spend $50 million in South Philly to create the nation's first video game arena. What? Is this the first? Is this? We, we, I feel like we hear stories about new arenas all the time. I guess they're all in process right now. Yeah, I don't think they're they're built. They're done. It's the Fusion Arena. Like I said, it's not really grumbling. I just question. Really, did we put this much money into fifty game? million dollars? Oh, here he goes. Fifty million dollars. <laughs> Awkward. Crap. And you know, okay, I get people like to watch watch people play video games from their home, right? But are people really going to get up and leave their house? Okay. Okay. Uh, let, okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's roll this around. Let's just, uh, people will get out and leave the house and go to Washington D.C. to listen to video game music being played. Mag Fest. Okay. People will get out of their house and go. Uh, you know, people don't go to the movie theaters anymore. That's because you can get all that content at home at your leisure cheaper with multiple people True. but again True. you can get all the same content okay at home. all right there's, there's, i don't there's, think you get but it's not there, a crowd there's, interaction well, there's okay wait 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 you can stay home you can be part of a community or you can go to a comic con and be part of the community in person it's a different thing it is it, okay, okay. Yeah, it it, is this is this thing. is a con this is a concept that I throw i i've been throwing out late lately too uh, people around wrestling uh you know hey yeah you can put the thing online and people can stay home and watch it and maybe even watch it for free when it's like a monday night raw but you're going to pay for that live experience right yeah so i've i've watched i don't know ninja or but is whatever it a live ex- i guess it is it a is a live experience yeah. cuz they are playing like, it right, right there, there in, in front, front of, of you, you. Yeah. And you probably see more of the screens and what's going on than what is being presented to you. You know, like you go to you go to a football game and you see all the people on the sidelines and you see the full field of everything going on versus that 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 window that you're given in the presentation that's on television. Right. Right. Same with a baseball game, a soccer game, uh, you know, mm-hmm. like any sports. Right. Um, you know, I, I've seen this, you know, you, you go to Pinburg. Uh, uh, which they stream it, um, but you go to Pinburg at Replay FX and you see everybody playing the pinball game. But again, the stream is right. you're sitting there saying, "Hey, so and so is on this table. And looks like he's doing da 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 da." Mm. You know, it's a different vibe, and that's what you pay to go see. Okay. And this is where the bet is. I, I know it seems weird because it's an electronic thing, right? Yeah. But it's still there's still people on the other end, right? What will be interesting is, are they going to have the announcers? Like when you go to a live sporting event, mm-hmm. you don't get the you don't get the announcers that you do on TV. Right? Are are they going to have the announcers on in the arenas, or is it just going to be a live view of of what's going on? Well, I don't know. It's going to be like wrestling. It's going to be like seeing a live wrestling show where you don't get the commentary to go home. <laughs> wow. Unless you're sitting in the back row over by Joe Dabrowski. Yes, that's yeah. true. Yeah, where it's quiet enough that you just hear them bellowing from the balcony where we have them set up. This is one of those things, too, where I feel like they could give you. There's going to be people that want like the merch Mm -hmm. and it's going to probably be a lot easier to go to one of these things and pick up your favorite team's jersey versus finding the jersey online somewhere kind of thing. Again, you mean like a wrestling show, like a wrestling show or your local Riverhound soccer game. Yes. Right. I mean, that's I mean, that's. I, I feel like the thing I attribute this to is the is the this river riverhound soccer right <laughs> is it's this weird niche thing this is not going to be a giant arena no but no. it's still fifty million dollars so sort right right but, but what is what's the going what's the going rate for a for a coliseum how, how many people are watching Twitch that's true. how many people are watching YouTube gaming that's true. right you're right yeah but that's from their house. Right. That's not them getting in their car and driving to this event. Right. Yet. 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 
we'll see. <laughs> I don't know how PAX East I know, goes. I'm old let's, 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 Krause, let's message you know. our friends that went to PAX East and see how that went. I mean, I, I've yeah, been no. to... I've been to cons where there's been gaming competitions, and it's a massive showing. Like uh, New York Comic Con was doing it uh, in, 20, Wizard, in Wizard 2011. Wizard Con in, in Pittsburgh. Wizard Con in Pittsburgh and in Philly did did uh, gaming mm-hmm. competitions. Yeah, so I mean, this is just a uh, there's there's kind of a track record for people have shown up for these. Let's give them a place to do this dedicated. So, and I'm sure they'll have other events there too, you know, I, yeah. I, of some sort. I, you know. Oh, right. It won't be a single yeah. use facility. I'm no, sorry. I, I, I would hope, um, you know, to, to kind of maximize that. Maybe they'll have concerts there or something. Arena football. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, arena football. Why not? <laughs> let's give that another shot. So, uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, the flyboard era. Amanda, Amanda Narcissi sent this over. It's a hoverboard. That uh, looks a lot at like. Well, let's see if I get the preloaded one here. Nope, I gotta sit through an AT and T commercial again. <laughs> um, but it's a hoverboard that looks a lot like the Green Goblin. <laughs> so it is terrifying. Um, it is the. Uh, it was. It, it was. It, it's called flyboarding, and it was. It was invented by a, a Frank Zapata in 2012. So this is a new, and this is like. This isn't like a hover hover thing. Like this, this looks like, um, it, it, it's kind of like the jet, the uh, the water propulsion ones that we've seen. I know we've seen some of those, like even here at the regatta where they demonstrate yeah. those things. I guess it's a version of that that just just does it with air. Does it with uh? I see if it says here what it works on, but yeah, it's like eerie. This thing floating. It just looks like I, you can you can see the um, like jet sort of propulsion when they're uh, in front of certain surfaces here. Yeah. Uh, but so, but it doesn't really talk about the technology on this, at least in this part. It's here. the hobgoblin's board, basically. Yeah. I, I I always get nervous about these. Like, what happens if the thing malfunctions and the as the battery dies and like it doesn't let you down like lightly? It's just like oh. Drop to the ground. And my comment earlier was, is, what is the helmet really? <laughs> that, uh, that helmet's not helping you, is it? Um, well, <laughs> Maybe over the water. Maybe. Maybe maybe eventually we'll be, we'll be able to hoverboard through the scare house in the off-season, right? Yes. <laughs> it's an opportunity. Bounce your head off the ceiling. Bonk, bonk, bonk. That's there why you, you need the helmet. Figure it out. There you go. There you go. Uh, it says it's capable of flying up to 90 miles per hour. And fly as high as ten thousand feet. Can you? Are you okay without oxygen up that high? I don't think you are. You're fine. Um, I'm trying to find the part where it says what they replaced the idea of the the water propulsion. Because remember, there was water propulsion. They, they basically hooked it up to um, a pump that just shot water through a right, hose. Right, and the water's what's and holding you up. down, yeah. like, the force of the water coming out of the bottom of the unit was the thing that, that, like, had you up. And I haven't seen the part on here where it says, they just said they removed that. And I don't see what they re- <laughs> replaced it with. Um, well, I'm guessing it's just blowing the air? Air, yeah. It, it just has, yeah. Wow. Some kind of turbine? And it flies over water, McFly. Anyways, um, let's see what else we got here. I mean, we got a few things that we're running low on time. Uh, April Fools seemed light this year, but there are a couple good ones. Um, Google Maps, you can play Snake. It's not as good as the Pac Man that they had for a while, though. Okay. It's it's not a good version of Snake, um, but it's there if you go into your menu on the left there, at least for the week, and you can play uh, a world version of Snake or San Francisco, London, Cairo, mm-hmm. a few different towns are represented there also and uh that was from uh, amanda as well and also uh, also uh, amanda is sad about air power not being released i'm i'm equally sad that air power they need to figure somehow figure that out <laughs> it, but, <laughs> we totally called that i'm yeah, sorry we did. yeah we, we did, did. <laughs> we totally called that i didn't even get a clap no <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there you go there you go. Feel better now? I feel great. Um, for Honor, Riz says uh, uh, one for <laughs> April Fool's. 
Because For Honor uh, replaced everybody in their game for 24 hours with rabbits. And that was awesome. Of Raging Rabbids fame. That? Yeah, that was I did was not awesome. see it, no. Uh, there was a good picture. I don't think it's... It, There's a video floating around. Oh, it's not it's in this awesome. article. It's awesome. But, but if you, they're, they're the goofy rabbits that, uh, they're from the Raging Rabbids games. They've done some games with Mario. There was a show that was on for a bit. I watched a little bit of it on Hulu for a bit. Uh, it, that was pretty great. Well, you know what else is pretty great, you guys? Uh, our good friends at Slice on Broadway supporting Pittsburgh co- Podcast with the perfect pepperoni pizza uh, here in Beachview, Carnegie, PA East End, and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, who just kicked off opening day here this week. I know our friends, like Matt Carlin, our friend in the mainstream media, was out there, and I hope he got his pizza too while he was at it. Uh, but go check them out in four locations if you're around town uh and uh some good stuff there they've been supporting us for a while feeding our guests here on the tuesday night podcast scene and uh thank them so much for their support for such a long time here on the awesome cast we watched them grow from a single little piece of shop to a to a citywide citywide thing it's great uh let's see what else you you guys want to touch on here uh anything real big dutters you got a couple of things in here uh, nothing crazy exciting. Um, <laughs> Google Plus starts going away today. Bye-bye. Officially. Yeah, it's officially RIP. I, I, I've been looking at that sad little checkbox every time <clears throat> I post something on uh, on WordPress that goes to your social media. I'm just like, oh, that's not, that's just going to go nowhere. But kind of what it kind of did to begin with. Uh, Google, Google got rid of a bunch of things. They got rid of the Pixel 2. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Yep. They got rid of the inbox. Mm-hmm. Wait, what do you they mean got, by got rid of the Pixel 2? Like no longer support or no, no longer selling? selling. No, no longer selling. selling. Um, yeah. So yesterday they announced, yeah, it was funny because I thought it was going to be an April Fool's joke and I got to the bottom and it's like, no, really. This is all <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, they got to watch that. The Pixel 2, the inbox, the URL shortener, Google Plus. I think that was all of them. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, but a, a bunch of them were were announced yesterday and then there were a couple that were announced in the past. Um Katie, what's going on with Snapchat? You're you're Ooh. our you're our, our small window in the Snapchat. So I keep you hip and cool with the Yeah, I, well, I don't know about that. Uh so Snapchat, uh, if you're familiar with the map and putting yourself on the map and seeing where your friends are at, are going to essentially <laughs> Didn't that get creepy for a while? It, it it can't. I do have my location hidden from certain people. Okay. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> like there was a lot of like, why is Bobby Cherry staring at me? Why? Like, yeah. yeah. Or you'd be standing right next to somebody and it'd be like really funny looking. Um, but you're able to. It's called status, uh, an option to share the snap map uh, on your snap map, a bit emoji depicting what you're up to at a certain place. So you might be standing there and you might want to be a, like being able to tell your friends what you were doing at that particular location. Like you might be saying just chilling or, you know, you're holding up a lot of these guys are holding up signs like H U M, which means hit me up Mm -hmm. in case you're wondering. Um, if you're looking to hang out, you know, trying to find other people to join you, you'll put something up. Or maybe if you're at work, you might have a sign that says I'm at work or doing something at work. So people will be able to know what you're doing. Not that you're just kind of standing there at a place because it kind of made assumptions depending on where you were located of what you might be doing mm-hmm. uh, at that time. But this way you actually can kind of convey what you were up to. Yeah. Like the, the picture is shown on this map is like come through. So it's like, you know, again, like, Hey, I'm looking for company or something. Right. And then the other thing is passport. And essentially it's checking in like four square, <laughs> oh. but it's only visible to you. And you're able to see that where you were um, mm-hmm. as you checked into various places on Snapchat. So they have two things coming out. And so with everything else, like are you in this article makes me laugh because it mentions at the end, we'll probably be seeing this in Facebook soon because guess what Facebook does? Just copies everybody else. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah. Yeah. So that's what the kids are doing. They are, and I'm sure at some point these various um, Bitmoji things that are happening will mean different things and what the sign says and we'll be inviting strangers to hang out with us in very odd ways. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's troublemaking uh <laughs> Why? do you have an eggplant sign <laughs> uh, you, it looks like you have an article in here for chilla too i do but i'm gonna break chilla's heart i don't know if you thought it was real and i don't want to make him cry i did think it was is that is it wasn't it was, an, it was april an, fools yeah it's an april oh, fools yeah. Uh, what was it oh that tony stark was investing in epcot's new friday's 
Sunday shop that was going to be all robotic and Iron Man themed, and it's not real. What the thing is, like, this looks, looks like half the stuff that gets announced it for does. Disney yeah. World these days, so... That's why, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I didn't read through the entire article. I I saw it and I'm like, oh, that looks really cool. Honest to goodness, <laughs> I had to click. <laughs> I did the same thing. Wait, wait, wait. I love the existing robotic ice cream technology demo. <laughs> yeah. That kind of was a tip. But, I mean, I had to click to the original article and scroll to the bottom of the original article for yeah. it to say, oh, by the way, this is an April Fool's joke. Like, it is not anywhere. <laughs> No, no. Article. Besides, yeah. well, besides. That oh, if you want to learn more about the coming attraction, click here. Oh, is this is this going to April Fools me? No, it's. it's I'm leaving no. Facebook. It gets weird. The, the, yeah. the, my favorite part of the article was down at the bottom where it talked about the different, like flavors yes. and things. Mm-hmm. Which, if you watched all the movies, you you get most of the references. Uh let's see, like the. Uh, da, 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 da. Like I understood that scoop. <laughs> When when Captain America's like, I understood that reference. Yeah, yeah. Hulk a Hulk a burning fudge. Uh, Stark waving <laughs> hazelnuts. Uh, infinity cones. Banner brownie smash. <laughs> Jeez. Thorbit or Thorbay. Thorbay. I think. Thorbay. Thorbay. Yeah. Yes. I like Thorbit better. <laughs> Thorbit. That's a different movie. <laughs> was it Norbit or something? I just yeah. I was just listening to something about that. Uh, Kraus, what is Microsoft doing to make my phone easier? Yeah, to Microsoft's use? trying to get it what? so you don't take your phone out of your pocket. That's, but they don't have a phone anymore. No, they don't have a phone anymore, but they have an app that connects <laughs> they do. They your do. phone to Windows 10. I forget that I open like Microsoft apps like all the time on my phone now. Right. So they have an app and Nintendo apps. It's called the My Phone app. Yeah. So the My Phone app is trying to keep your phone in your pocket. But uh, I think it's a really neat idea. So, you know, while all of you blue bubble or green bubble people. Blue bubble. Get it on right. The, on, the, <laughs> on the fruit phones. The blue... <laughs> have had this for years. We we Windows people. I could always say fruit phone with such contempt. <laughs> we we Windows people have not had our text messages on our our PCs. Mm-hmm. And um, so this feature is not only cross platform, iOS and Android, it brings your text messages to your phone presently. Uh, soon, uh, with an update, um, it's also going to bring your actual live um, phone screen to your Windows 10 based PC. Which I think is a great idea because, you know, then you can interact and do all the things you would do on the phone, but not have to take the phone out of your pocket. Wait, wait, wait. Is this? Uh, I'm sorry. There was the, the your phone big picture. Is this, the, is this an actual thing? I, I thought it was just a Windows phone <laughs> video that they but stuck this is, in here. This, is, this was announced as part of, this is this is going to be in the next yeah the next version. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, what they didn't, what I couldn't get, and I'm going to have to look at the article you posted here. What I couldn't find in the past when they announced this there's going to be discrepancies of what capabilities are there for for iPhone and what are available for Android. Sorg, if you remember, I, I did a number of coverages on the Samsung utilities, the, yeah, the right. side sync, yeah, you know, yeah. stuff like that. And I'm guessing this is why Samsung started to deprecate and discontinue um, their stuff because Microsoft was going to bring this native to both the operating system and the Android OS, so it didn't really make sense for them to keep it up. But I I have used this numerous times when Samsung had it on their platform, um, both in a wireless and wired state, um, whether it was controlling apps, responding to text messages, bringing up something that was only on my phone, wanting to show someone a picture of something that was on my phone, yep. but didn't want them like to try to awkwardly have them look over my shoulder um the technology is awesome i just hope they figure out how to make this work across the multiple multitude of android flavors alongside the um, ios platform as well yeah well that's the hope you know and i that's what this article is saying they're they're tr- attempting to deliver i'm hoping with apple opening up the uh is a lot of the sc- the remote screen sharing capabilities. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping they're they're able to bring some of that. I don't know if we're going to get the remote mouse and keyboard support, but even a view perspective would be nice. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, it's yeah, that's that's cool. Um, 
I mean, if they were, they, they've already done like a little bit with notifications and everything, so there's the next step. Yeah, exactly. So that makes sense. So, um, and again, more of them. We don't have a phone. We're gonna get everybody connected. Uh, let's see, Chilla, what do you got here? So there's something that really excited me. So along with Google announcing getting rid of a bunch of stuff. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, by the way, Doug is saying that he's he misses inbox because uh, the ads on Gmail are getting pretty bad, and I have to agree with that. They they did announce um, yesterday, and I hope this was real too, or I'm going to be sad yet again. Thanks, mm-hmm. Dutters. Um, Google was celebrating its 15th birthday. Mm-hmm. They've they've announced lots a of number... animations on every app today. By the way, <laughs> they've they've announced um, not only Smart Compose, which isn't something I'm crazy about, coming to other platforms. It's cool and all. But what I really like is the schedule send feature, oh. and I wish everyone would adopt this. And here is why. Mr. Krause knows that he will see me online working quite often late at night. Yes. Um, I refuse unless it is someone requesting something of me. I refuse to send emails after 7 p.m. for work. Okay. But I probably put in two to three hours of work after 7 p.m. quite frequently at night. Mm -hmm. What do I do? I take all those emails. I save them as draft. And when I get when I when I get to work in the morning, I go into my draft folder and I fire off every one of those emails because what I don't want to happen is a I don't want a notification to wake someone up at midnight Mm -hmm. thinking that I really need something, Mm -hmm. and b I don't want them to feel compelled to go work right i'm trying to get my stuff done and get ready for the next day i don't think that they should have to feel it necessary to respond um if i had this type of feature i could type up all those emails and say send tomorrow at 8 a.m to all these and i wouldn't have to think about it um when i when i get into work as well as being able to fire off emails when i'm out of the office but i want to send something to someone um, but I don't want to send it now because I want it to be kind of on that delay. Um, I just see this type of scheduled management to be highly, highly beneficial. And, and I, I just want to kind of add on to that. Like, I, I know some people may poo-poo that saying, well, email shouldn't be immediate. Da, 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 da. It depends on the company culture, especially in a corporate environment like you guys are, a big bank international. I noticed this when I deal with certain entities, uh, you know, that are clients of ours. You know, I, I notice like if it's this or if it's an individual or if it's this, like people use email differently for better or for worse. But and again, and and, and, I, and that's a really cool. That's a really good mindful tactic, knowing how your people in your organization do respond to email. Right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and, and a lot of times in the, within an organization, you can't always like I can't add you to my right instant messaging. Right. Right. So sometimes email is almost treated like chat with external Absolutely. entities. Absolutely. So. And to be honest, I think that if I answer an email after hours, it opens the door to whomever I'm communicating with that lets them know, oh, she's now available after yeah. hours. You're so you're going to expect my a response thing. on an emergency at 10 p.m. on a Friday when yeah, you're like, you I'm out for the weekend. Right. Just, exactly. So know. there are certain emails yeah. that I do not respond to specifically for that reason mm-hmm. just because I don't want to open that door. Well, even for me, I'm finding like I'll, I'll sit down on a Friday and again, I work odd hours, but like, you know, it's the end of the month and I kick off invoices on a Friday afternoon. And it was like, well, nobody's going to touch this until Monday morning. It's buried and everything, which loses the effectiveness of sending your email, your email invoice, mm-hmm. right? Because right? it's like, maybe they'll see it, maybe they won't. Um, you know, so like things like that, you know, like 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 that kind of scheduling. Oh, I know this person does a lot of X work on, on Tuesday, you know, or uh, they don't really need to get to it right away. I just want to make sure it's out there. You know, you, you can do that accordingly. So Boomerang was the solution for this for the longest time, wasn't it, Missy? Was that something you were using? Yeah, I was using Boomerang quite a bit because if I read something after hours, I would Mm -hmm. be able to kick it back so that I could look at it first thing in the morning. And I also liked that I could schedule Mm -hmm. kind of my response stuff to it, too. Um, But, you know, that would be awesome if it's built in like that. Like like little things like the undo. Like, okay, Inbox is gone, but a lot came from Inbox that I love. 
using the snooze. The snooze isn't ex as easy to use as it used to be in Inbox, but it's still there and very useful. You know, it kind of the same thing, right, Chilla? Like, okay, I want to make sure this person gets back to me on this email, so I want it to resurface in my email in three days. Right. Because mm -hmm. if they haven't gone back to me, I need to start addressing Yeah, you want to know why. Like, right. and, and it's there in your email, and you get to use it as a checklist system. And the way it archives, uh, you know, lets you get to a kind of fake inbox zero without deleting everything, right? Um, so, and also things aren't thrown away, you know, that, that, Google, that Google Gmail kind of idea. So, man, if that's coming, that's amazing. And that, that changes a lot of our tactics probably. So I don't know if you saw Mike Greathouse's response on the chat, but he said um, Outlook can do that, Chilla. So, just so you know. Oh, I will have to contact him. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys have Outlook as well in your setup? Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. Okay. We don't have Gmail. I'm a, I, I guess my comment at the beginning was, I think this feature should be on every mail platform. Yeah. Yes, um, that's right. So, At least yeah. every platform, used, especially used by a corporate entity, a business entity of some sort. So, hey, okay, I need to address this that uh, was brought up. So I, I did my update last week. Um, which gave you News Plus and everything, but also if you're an AT and T user, let's see if I can I can I can enact this here to show you guys. You get that sweet 5G E. Here we go again, AT and T. We got it again. Remember when we had 4G before there was LTE? Uh, no, it is it is not 5G for reals. Mm -hmm. And the the um, are they at least admitting it? Yeah, AT and T is defending it at least, okay. uh, and talking about nationwide five uh, G by as early as twenty twenty apparently. Uh, but uh, I, I was just playing with it a little bit. I, I noticed it. I just had happened to notice walking out of the office here on last Tuesday or Wednesday, whenever that happened, and I had um, gone off the Wi Fi, you know, far enough to get off the Wi Fi. Saw it pop up. I'm like, what? That's new. And and kind of keeping an eye on like it's here at the top of the hill, it's not at my house four blocks away. Oh, <laughs> that's not. interesting. It's not, and um and 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 it's it was like downtown on the North Shore, but then I had like uh, our friend uh, Mike down there that uh, at, at a certain newspaper, um uh saying I guess I know no they're they're both over there. Uh, said that they don't have it there, but he might not have updated his phone yet. So ah. you have to be on the uh, whatever the update was last week. And and Chilla, I think you had talked about you were getting it already on some other phones on previous episodes. I was I was getting it on the betas. Yeah. Um. So you I think we briefly coming. talked about it. And I'm now I'm trying to go back and find. Twelve two um, is the is the version right now. Twelve yeah, but here's what I did. I took. I did um speed tests yeah at home where i was lte and then i did speed tests when i was downtown and i was doing some of that too to try to compare and contrast and what i was seeing was the lte download speed was actually higher when i was at home mm -hmm. but my upload speed was crazy lower at home I would I, I would also when I, counter when you're downtown, you're downtown with everybody downtown, and I think that may affect it as well. Yeah, I, but yeah, I don't know. I um, I got I got like ten I got ten up and down when I was over by David Lawrence Convention Center with four bars, and then I got over the North Shore and I was doing a good like sixty. Oh, wow. Up and something down, something like that. Uh, but I don't know about both. Uh, they're in the thread over on the group. There's the, but the, the other thing is is. There's a there's a problem in a, in a two areas within the city where the there it's like a it's not a dead zone but it's a not so great zone. I know Frick Park used to be a, a problem with that. Uh, Frick Park, uh, top of Allentown, um, are two spots I know are problems in town. Mm. So at least with AT and T, uh, Verizon, and Frick Park as well. It was like the, like all the towers got taken out or something at some point a few years ago, but in a neighborhood too. So. Yeah, right outside of right outside of like market the market square. Yeah, um, you remember where the place used to be that played all the re replays of the Steelers games? No, I don't. Uh, there used to be like a store, and on the corner they always had a boombox sitting outside, and they would play 
um, replay Steelers games all the time. Um, yeah, like I was getting 40 up and 40 down consistently downtown. But then when I was at home, I was getting like, I'm trying to find it. I think I was getting like 60 down, but only 20 up. Mm. So I was noticing like the, and it has something to do with the antennas. So you also have to have um, certain phones only right. support that. Um, I do notice that my iPad Pro first generation 12 inch iPad Pro does not do it's still on LTE. It's sitting here, at least. Right. Um, so, I mean, we'll see as I travel with it if I notice anything different. That will also be another thing I'll, 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 know, I'll keep an eye out, too, because I'm going to be traveling to L.A. and Nashville over the next two weekends. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what pops up where um, and what that kind of looks like. So looking and forward. It's not just iOS, too, because I, I noticed. Yeah, you're saying Samsung. I got the, I got, yeah, I got the, um, the OS update for from Samsung. And I was downtown, and I was getting the the five G E notifier. By the way, I'm getting news from producer Missy that uh, uh, users from Germany and France have checked in on our live stream tonight. So, what's up out there, uh, international uh, listeners? Uh, as we're closing the show here, um, hey, want to give a shout out to our good friend Alex Cars, somebody I'll be seeing actually this weekend out there in L A. We're gonna watch some wrestling downtown L A. and have some fun out there. Uh, out for work, of course, but in the meantime, uh, he's got a lot of stuff going on uh, at alexcars.media. Uh, he is putting together the puzzle of design and media from branding to print and digital products. He can do logos, merchandise, website, even photo and video projects. Go check him out at alexcars.media to get started. That's K A H R S dot media, alexcars.media. Uh, and uh, go check him out. He's somebody who's always in our chat room, and he does some good stuff, and he does some work with us um, here around Psychic Media Services and Sorgatron Media as well. Does some great T-shirt designs for us and other professional wrestlers out there, even the first iteration of the uh, IndieWrestling.us website that we rolled out a bit ago. So go check him out, AlexCars.media. All right. Uh, so uh, do, 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 do. we got, uh, of course, Pittsburgh Current will actually be at 1 p.m. this Thursday. And we're going to have Mike Wysocki with a Pittsburgh Pirates preview going on uh, here in the studio. So tune in for that this week. And also we have a lot of announcements over Wrestling Mayhem Show about a lot of guests. A lot of people that have been on Monday Night Raw recently are going to be popping in, including this evening. And, uh, and, and if you have any questions... Because uh, one of our friends actually went to Japan for about six weeks. So if you have any any Japan questions that I, I, I can pass along to her, please uh, let me know as well. John Chichilla at Chilla on the tweeters. On the tweeters. John Chichilla on the Facebooks. Chilla on the Twitter. I can't remember. Chilla579 on Instagram. He's out there. Just look for John Chichilla. You'll, you'll find him. John, yeah, but, yeah, but you might find my dad, too. Oh. <laughs> Even better. I'm John Chichilla Jr. Oh. So so just make sure you look at the picture and check the age. Just I'll just start calling you JR. <laughs> there you go. Katie Dutters. Katie Dutters on the tweeters. Twitter. RogueLaserGrounds.com. Yep. That's easy. Yep. Easy peasy. <laughs> Are you, what we strive for. What's your official title with Rogue Laser Grounds? I have no idea. Are you? Direct, I don't think. Are you? She, are you director of the Pew Pews? Oh, director of the Pew Pew. Pew Pew director. She. You would think she would get like an admiral or sergeant. Oh, oh. lieutenant Pew Pew. Normally, she's the director of sales Colonel. and marketing. Colonel Pew Pew. Colonel <laughs> Pew Pew. Well, you Rogue Laser title, Grounds. Lower third. <laughs> Colonel Pew Pew reporting for duty. Even the scare house, you should have like lead. Well, I mean, we are already you're, you're already unofficially lead zombie wrangler. So yeah, true. think about it, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you settle? Do you, do you settle disputes in the office now with with, with the laser tag? I to. mean, it, like you got to build in team building exercise. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Uh Ron Kraus. How are you? <laughs> Wait, no, this is the end of the show. Yeah. A crazy crap with the K's on the Twitter. Yeah. Anything else going on out there? Nope. I'm just living life. <laughs> living life that Microsoft way, baby. Uh, well, Microsoft and Android, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The 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 Mandroid way. That's right. The Mandroid. That's awesome. Yeah. Right? Oh uh, yes it is. 
Uh, enjoying those Xbox Gold uh, for this month. Yes. A lot of Star Wars lately. A lot of Star Wars. A lot, a lot of original a Xbox I don't have, Star Wars. I don't have any complaints there. I, I was playing Xbox the other day, and I realized I bought a bunch of original Xbox games, and I never went to check how many of them will play on the 360. Oh, cool. Half of them played on the 360. I'm playing the Hulk game from that bad movie with Ang Lee. Nice. <laughs> it's a good game. Yeah. The, good. Game, the game was awesome. Yeah. Oh, the game's great. Bad Marvel movies. Make great games. That one, Wolverine mm-hmm. Origins, I recommend them. But anyways, I digress. Producer Missy, back there, didn't yell at us too much on the on the on the uh, we did good. Mic tonight. Yay. Oh, there was plenty of sighing and eye rolling. You're good. Sighing and eye rolling. <laughs> Jeez. Thank you everybody for joining us. Everybody in the chat room, new faces and old, uh, joining us from apparently all over the place. Uh, you have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.